Howdy everybody in YouTube land. Just when I thought everything was over. <laughs> well, I got the last three boards done, but since um, uh, my video tutorial and my postings at, at the 68K Macintosh Liberation Army is starting to, the word's starting to get out a little bit. Okay, so I got four of these boards from three different people. Okay. Um, now, here's the thing. These two, I may not do a video on, simply for the fact that, well, this one I might, but this one I may not do a video on because it hasn't been touched, and it's pretty much the same process as before. So, no need to bore you all to death by making the same video over and over and over again with a different board every time. So, but, there is a unique difference with this board. And I'm going to grab the flashlight. This camera does not have one. It does not have a little LED on front. So I have to manually use my uh, blue little flashlight here to show you. So what's wrong with this board is aside from needing capacitor job done, which is pretty typical of systems of this age, okay? But there's another problem. Looky here. those two Q1 and Q2 are completely smoked and that's why I got this board otherwise the original owner would have just attempted to recap by himself but unfortunately we've got two blown Q1 and Q2 which actually form the output transistors to drive the internal speaker okay luckily before I left work I grabbed a couple of brand new ones so I'm hoping this op amp, which is a TL071, is not bad. Um, that way I can just go ahead and fix this board up and make sure it works and everything's good. If it becomes a more extensive problem that people need to know to look out for, I will go ahead and do a quick video on that. Other than that, I will probably not be doing a video on this board. So, with that said, then we have this board. Okay, which this video video is pretty much going to be about all three of these boards and the general issue, and they'll all be separate videos of course, but this one was a full recap, um, but no video and no audio or nothing, it's not working at all. Okay, um, I'm going over this board really carefully make sure everything was good I checked all the fuses I checked all the connections I checked the inductors and everything like I did in previous videos and everything's good the pals are in the right spots and all that stuff but there's one thing that I don't like when he recapped this board uh, the solder mask is scratched off in various locations and I don't like that at all uh, that's the thing you gotta watch out for like right there you can really see it solder mask is pretty gone okay um, I don't like that because when you solder these capacitors down like I was saying before these pads are extremely wide and the traces run really close to these pads and it's possible that when you solder these down solder can flow onto adjacent traces if the solder mask is missing okay and I was going over everything I found. Um, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to try to get it. Yeah, you might be able to see it. Just right there. You can actually see that solder joint. It's soldered to the main pad like it's supposed to be, but if you look to the trace to the right, there's a little flow point where the solder had flow to the trace right next to it. And that trace runs all the way up and around to UA8, uh, the third pin up from UA8, which is, got my little probe here, this point right there. So, that I know for a fact ain't gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that issue, because this, is this is the first board that I received. So I gotta get that one done first. And this is the one I received next to it. 
because the same guy that had sent this one also sent two analog boards and power supplies in here as well. Um, I gotta go through that and I will be doing videos on that to figure out what's wrong with those. But um, this one though, the, the solder had bridged for sure over here. So I wanna clear that out. And probably what I'll do is I'll pull all these out and fix that issue and hopefully it fires up. And if it does, then I, I'll mention it in a video, but I won't be doing a whole separate video on that one maybe. I don't know, I'll, I'll have to figure it out. Um, but another thing, there's, there's three people that sent me these boards. None of them sent me a ROM sim. <laughs> and I only have one SC30, and that's my personal one. So I gotta rip it apart to grab a ROM sim. But luckily, those three boards that I fixed earlier, I haven't sent them off yet. So I'll just go ahead and borrow a ROM sim from them and then RAM. Now this one's already got RAM, but the rest of them don't. So anyway. That's that out of the way. And now you have a scoop on what's up with this one. That leaves these two right here. These two boards came from a well-respected member at the 68K Macintosh Liberation Army Forum. And he lives in Japan. So these come all the way from Japan. Okay. Um, he is experienced and he does know what he's doing. He recapped both of these boards completely. And as far as I can tell, everything looks just peachy key. Um, the solder joints look good. Everything looks good. There's no errors that I can tell. No bridging. Um, everything is just peachy. So, no shorted components that I'm not aware of or anything like that. So, I mean, he's not an idiot. He knows what, he knows what he's doing. Um, I was reading what he's done. What he has done is he's switched CPUs, he's put accelerator cards in there, he's tried different ROM sims. Um, he's tried checking all of his connections against the, the bomb art schematics, making sure there's no broken connections. He did find one, which I believe is on this board right here, and it is. And he, he fixed it with that, and I verified it with the meter, and it is correct, okay? But... This one will produce zebra stripes, known as Simacy Mac or Sima Mac, however you want to pronounce it, and it will chime the chimes of death, not an actual startup bomb. This one produces zebra stripes with no sound at all. Okay, so I did notice with the Romsons removed, I fired them up, and they both produce zebra stripes, which is strange because these. Well, I don't know about those, but the other three, I took the Robinsons out and tried them. They produce random images, or random uh, pixels, in whatever's stored in these sims on, or not sims, but video memory on power-up. But these produce zebra stripes, so I know there's got to be a failed logic circuit somewhere. Um, but yeah, he, he did he did go through these boards completely and troubleshooted them and ruled a lot of stuff out. Uh, I personally checked the three fuses on all three boards. I checked all the inductors and I checked for burnt resistors and everything checks out perfectly fine. So it pretty much concludes to me that there's a fault in the logic circuit. Um, but I did notice one thing, okay, and he noticed the same thing, which is what further proves my point. Um, if I turn the meter on, if I measure on this board, I'm going to start with this one first. From this point, which is the 5 volt point to ground, um, that's what I get. And that's about the same on all the boards, except for this one. I'll go ahead and put that one there to ground. And that's a little bit lower. It's actually not that far lower, but it is low enough to make a difference. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab my other meter, which is right here, just for accuracy type situations here. Set it, the battery's low, so that's why I'm not really using it. Grab the probes. I want to do the same thing. Five volt point to ground on this one is 
a little over 200. Okay. I'm going to take this one and test it to ground. And about half as low. And the 200 so reading on this one is the same between all the boards I've had. This one's a lot lower, so for sure there's going to be a logic circuit somewhere. That's bad. Um, there's one other thing I do need to check that I haven't checked on none of the other boards because I didn't necessarily have to, but it gets me every time. Are these Burns network filters. What these actually are is they are a single T uh, suppressing filter. Basically, in a nutshell, um, they are known to go bad. Uh, it could be what's bad on these boards. I don't know yet. But I'm guessing he probably, ch I, would, I would say he's checked that. But if, if he's checked everything else, I'm sure he's checked that. But basically, what those filters are comprised of is you have an input point here, an input point there, and this is attached to the ground. Basically, you have a resistor of a certain value. I know, the damn thing's moving on me. Tie point there. And you have another resistor of a certain value. And tie point here. This point goes to the integrated circuit. This point goes to the jack, which is, say, these two devices there, okay? Or that's the floppy filter. And then between the two, you have a ceramic capacitor of a specific value. And if I remember correctly, on these filters, they're 33 ohm, resistors there are 33 ohm resistors and there's like a 500 uh, trying to use this on a receipt is crazy there's a 500 picofarad capacitor okay and this is tied to the ground point and uh, there should be no conductivity from this point the ground all right now you will get a resistance from here and here from this point to this point but you should never get a resistance from here to here at any circumstances um, what happens is on these burn filters these capacitors decide to go leaky and cause a parasitic resistance to form inside that capacitor of say a low or even a medium ohms and then actually on the SE I've had them where these capacitors short completely out so this resistor is essentially grounded at this middle tie point from both sides um, and that's not good because what that does is you got a high level driver you're pulling it to ground for a 33 ohm resistor okay and you have the two SCC chips or actually there's four chips that comprise of the serial outputs that connect here same thing with the floppy um, I don't think that by itself would cause a zebra stripe syndrome but I have read online years ago that it does cause floppy drive issues, of course, thinking there's an external floppy attached when there's not. But, and in some rare cases, this will cause a SEMA CMAC if they're bad. So, actually, you know, while I'm doing this video, I'm going to go ahead and test them. Um, I don't want to feel like, I don't feel like editing this video. I'm just going to upload it straight as it is because... The video editing software takes forever for it to compile, so I'm just going to go ahead and screw on the tripod right here. And then pull out the legs and get all the camera to the ground there. So, actually, I'll tell you what we're going to do is we're going to put this in here. While that's in the view, 
we'll go ahead and test the Burns network filters. So these two on a Burns filter are the common tie points for that capacitor. So which is ground. So if I connect these two together, now I'm using the wrong probes, dumbass. So let's try this again with the right probe. So we're going to connect these two together and if they're, they're connected together and which should be connected to ground. And that's true. There should be no connection at all on these Burns filters. It just depends on what circuit it is, but I've studied the schematic and there should be no connection at all to ground on these unless the filter is bad or the associated chip is bad. Okay, This one appears to be good. And then that's common ground. So we're going to test the next Burns filter. It's common's ground and then the next point, uh oh, I think we have a problem here. here we got connection through there. All the capacitors are tied together, so one shorter capacitor will create a cascading step through this, which is basically the res resistance plus the resistance plus the res same resistance plus the resistance. And then as I get closer to ground the other way, it comes back down. Oh, look at that. That's a really low value. That's extremely low. And it's going to be the same on the other side since it's a single T filter. Yep, it is. That's not good. Okay. You know, actually while I'm doing this video, let's just go ahead and check the other one. Let's go ahead and check it. Why not? Let's check the same filter. Put this on ground. Let's make sure I'm in the camera's view here. So on ground, okay, that's normal. Oh, see, this one's not doing it. That's essentially the same board. So this filter is presumably good, which tells me the filter on the other one's bad. Okay, everything's good, good, and then back to ground again. Okay, next filter, we got ground. Ooh. There's another one. There's pretty much a direct short right there between these two. The actual resistance value right across from it. Let's try the next one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and then back to ground. But right there, there's something wrong. But see, this one's not cascading like the other one is. So either there's a short directly in here, which I don't think so. Um, most likely the pin that's connected to here is going to one of these of the four chips. One of these chips is defective. I doubt the filter is defective. I will pull it just to make sure. But just because it's not cascading up like the other one did tells me that there's an actually a bad chip on this board. But in the case of this one, where they cascade up to the middle point and they cascade back down, the Burns filter is bad. So I bet you if I pull this filter out, this machine will start up. Maybe. I probably will. This one, uh, I'm finding it hard to believe the filter is actually shorted between these points. I'm finding it more likely to believe that one of these chips, I have to look at the schematic again, I think this chip is actually connected up here. Which is this chip, this, um, what is it? Uh, 75, one, uh, 75 175 chip right here. It's probably shorted. If it's shorted, it's going to drag down the SCC. And if it drags down the SCC, guess what? It's not going to start up because it's going to fail the hardware check. So uh, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for further updates.